As we know, ChatGPT is familiar with a variety of coding languages and formats. When it comes to gaming, it can help you build games that you can play using Terminal and it can also help you build user interfaces for your games. And this is what we are also going to do. Additionally, it can of course provide also suggestions and ideas to help you boost your creativity. In this lecture, we will build a game that can be played using a Terminal and then afterwards we will ask it to help us build a user interface for it. So the game that I want to build will allow the user to guess a word that has been chosen by the computer. And therefore in a new chat, I'm just going to prompt ChatGPT, can you code a guess the word game that I can play in terminal? And then I see this has been created and I see also that this is using a Python file. So in this case, we need to, of course, install Python on our machine. So for this, you can just go to python.org slash downloads, and then you can download Python. This will just download an installation file on your local machine. Be aware if you have a different operating system, just download the installation file according to your operating system. Then you can just quickly execute this file and go through the installation process. In my case, I have Python already installed and then once we have everything installed, Python is on our machine, we can just go ahead now and copy this file. Again, we have the description of what has been done and what we need to do is we need to copy and paste this code into a Python file. So this is the name ending of the Python file and then we run it in terminal. Let's see how this works. We go back into Visual Studio Code. And in here we see that we still have our previous folders and files. To organize this a little bit better, we will create a new folder for website and then a second one for the game. So we just right click somewhere in the blank space, we say new folder and this will be website. And we can move those assets, this folder, just directly into this website. And also we can move the CV file directly into the website. So we just drag and drop it and do the same also with this index file. Also directly into website. We of course say we want to move it and then everything is in website included. And now we want to create a new folder. So again, we right click and we give this folder the name game. And in this game, we want to create now a new file. Let's call it just game. And we will, of course, give it the Python ending dot py. And now we can just go ahead and paste this code that we have gotten from ChatGPT. Let's just make sure that we have this code here copied. And then I will go and paste everything in here. So this is the code. Now, of course, let's save it. And of course, what we need to do now is we have now a new folder. And so that the terminal is able to find this file, we need to navigate to this folder. So to do this, one simple way of doing this is to right click on game.py. And in here, we can just select open an integrated terminal. And then we can see that this is now correctly navigated already to our location, the game folder. And all that we need to do is we now need to type Python and the name of the file game.py. I will execute it and this game is started. And now I can start playing this game. So for example, I can now start with a word like, let's say E. And I see this was not a correct word. Oh, and I see this letter E is included. So this is already pretty nice. Let's see if I can find another one. And I see the R is also included. So maybe now I will use a letter, let's say Z. And I see this is not included. So I have used one of our attempts. Let's see what else we can find. I see this could be something, maybe let's use this. And I see this is watermelon. So I have already known actually this word because I've seen it in here. So this is the word. And if we now want to quit this game, we can just use control C and this will exit the game. But now that we see if we have a look at this word list, yeah, this is after a while probably pretty boring. And therefore I'm wondering if I could increase this list so that the computer has an infinite list of words to choose from.
Therefore, I will just simply ask ChatGPT, is there a way to have an infinite number of words to choose from? And then this is the result that I get. In my case, I get the response words.txt, so an additional file. It is also possible that you get the response to use an external API. This would also work, but then we probably also have to set up the API, sign up for this. There are some websites that we can use for this, but in our case, it is anyway simpler to just use this words.txt file. And now I will say, I would like to have now three different files that I can choose from. And therefore, I make another suggestion. Can you create three text files that have 10 words each? So like this, I can choose between a different difficulty level. So I will have easy and then also I will have medium and then I will also have hard. So this is what I would like to get. Like this, I will now see that there can be three different files. Of course, what we now need to do, this has been created before and now we should update the Python file. Please update the Python file accordingly and give me the full Python file. Let's just copy this and paste it again into Visual Studio Code. I will paste everything, save it, and of course, now I will run the game again. And now I see I can choose from different difficulty levels. For example, I can say easy. And then I see this doesn't work. So let's see why this is the case. We can see if we have a look. And of course, I get this error message because of course I have not created this easy.txt file yet. So we can simply do this also in our existing folder. So we will open up game. So we will right click on game and create a new file. We will have easy.txt and afterwards let's just use this single file for now. So we will just of course use this list from here and we can just copy everything directly. So we paste it in here, we save it. And of course we could now also create the other files, but in our case, this is fine. So now let's try it again. We start the program and now let's use easy. And we see this has now started the game again. And we can now see probably it should be one of those words. So we could start by guessing something and we can see in this case, it might be maybe orange. So we can type in O and like this, we can see that now we have again improved the game. Of course, again, we could now ask for additional instructions. For example, how do I ask for hints? We could just ask ChatGPT how we can implement this into the game. And since we have now seen how we can create this basic game and also how we can update it, we now want to see how we can now actually build a user interface for this. So that's also something JetGPT can help us with and we will explore this in the next lecture. In this lecture, we want to see how we can create a user interface for our game. We will do this by converting this code into JavaScript so that I can have a user interface to play this game on. In this example, I'm choosing to use the browser as my user interface, but I also want to point out that JetGPT can convert this into code like C-sharp if you plan on using a tool like Unity to create the user interface. So I'm going to prompt ChatGPT, convert this code into JavaScript so that I can play it on my browser. And we can see that in our case, JetGPT has again created two files, the JavaScript file, this is the name of the file. And then we have also a, CC, a CSS file and also an HTML file. So we have again, three different files. Again, in your case, it can be different. You can just easily also follow the instructions that you get or do the same. Yeah. And just like in the previous lecture, I'm also going to now set up this folder structure. So in our game, we will just create these three files. So first of all, we create the file. index.html, 
Then we have the second file. This is the CSS file. So we will also create this new file in our gaming folder. This is also created. And then we have also lastly this script.js file that we can also finally create. And we are going to now paste in all of that code. We will start with the JS file. We will paste in everything in here, save it of course. Then we have the index file. This is the first one. We are going to copy it and paste it also in here. Then we also have the HTML file. I'm also going to copy and paste this in here, going to save it. And then lastly, we also have our CSS file. So I'm also going to copy this and paste it into here and of course, save it. Now let's see again the instructions. So we can see that everything should be there. Save these three files in the same directory. We have already done this and open the index.html file in your browser. You should see the guess the word game with an input field to enter the letters and a button to make the guess. The game will then start with a word from easy to difficult and so on. So let's see if this actually works. Of course, we now could just also open this in the folder like this and we can also open it from within Visual Studio. I'm just going to open it actually from here. So I'm going to double click and I will see this is our game. So I see enter a letter. I will see, maybe I will use an A. I will guess and it is included. I will use an E and maybe I can find the word. So let's see, this one didn't work. And I see we are out of attempts. The word was orange. I have not guessed it. And I think this is not bad at all. Of course, I see now the difficulty level is not included. So I would also like to include the difficulty level. I'm going to say, please also include the difficulty levels. And this tells me that I need to adjust some files. So in this case, Let's see which files we have to adjust. In this case, we see the JavaScript file. Let's copy it in here into JavaScript. Going to save it. And also afterwards, this should also be adjusted. Yes, this also has some adjustments. So let's also paste that in here. And I think the style file should not have been changed. And this is actually the case. So we can just refresh and we see now in here we have a difficulty level. So I can now choose, for example, medium, or let's again go with easy because I've only set up the easy file. But I see in this case, this button is not really working. So I can change something, but it has actually no effect. So again, I can just ask ChatGPT. The difficulty level drop down has no effect. Can you please make it work? And it tells me that I need to update the index.html file. I'm going to copy this now. And now I see when I go into the index file, I'm going to paste it. So I don't know if something has actually changed in here. We also need to update the JavaScript file. And now we see this was the previous code. We can just actually add this additional function. I'm just going to copy this in here, going to the script. And before, of course, reset game, let's just add also this. We see this is actually duplicate. So let's actually remove this. And now let's save it and see if this actually now works. So we will again update the page. And we see easy has been selected, medium, and then it changes actually. So in this case, this difficulty level will actually work. And if we have a look into our JavaScript file, we can see in this case, we have now this word list where we can add words. And of course, again, we could also make adjustments like for example, saying we would want to have this in an external file. And then we would get instructions again on how we can update this to make it also that it works with an external file. So as we can see, ChatGPT is a pretty intuitive coder. Just like building a website, ChatGPT can help you also build basic games for someone with little to no coding experience.
And if anything about the code confuses you, you can simply ask ChatGPT to explain it in very simple words. And also, of course, if the code is getting more complicated, it is again better to just ask for snippets and see how you can update this. So you can also, of course, ask ChatGPT to explain what exactly has to be updated. And in the next lecture, we will now see how we can use ChatGPT to help finding answers to any problems you might have with your coding projects. That's what we are doing in the next lecture.